turning back to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. We'll finish up tonight. One more spiritual gift. Before we do, we're going to have a little pop quiz, okay? Just a little pop quiz. Good looking crowd tonight. A little pop quiz. You... This is, this is question and answer, okay? So don't, don't sit there on your hands, okay? Number one, who has a spiritual gift? Every believer. That is right, every Christian. When do they receive it? When they get saved, that conversion. What is a spiritual gift? Say it. Say it. Divine empower. I call it a divine enablement. To do, uh, to do work in the service of the Lord. Now, what are the two primary reasons believers have been gifted? Two primary reasons. We've been hitting them. Edification of the church and evangelizing the world. That is exactly right. What are the two major categories of gifts? We learned that this morning or last week. Permanent and temporary. Permanent ministry gifts and temporary sign gifts. Now, can believers have the same gifts? Absolutely. Do they have to be used in the same way? No. All right. Very, very good. Y'all are getting it. Some of you are listening. You're taking notes. Eh? Absolutely. Amen. All right. Let's, let's look at it again. Let's, let's go ahead in chapter number 12. And let's uh, read, beginning in verse number 8, once again, the Apostle Paul says, For to one, speaking of believers, is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Now, the word of wisdom, that gift is given today in order to make application of the already revealed word of God. That is the gift of having a word of wisdom. That person has been gifted to make application to the already revealed Word of God. And then he goes on in verse 8. He says, To another believer, the Word of knowledge by the same Spirit. The, the gift of knowledge is the ability to understand Scripture and the ability to help other people understand Scripture. The word of wisdom is the ability to apply scripture and the word of knowledge is the ability to understand scripture. Very important. Now keep reading. He also says in the verse number 9, the first part, to another faith by the same spirit. So the gift of faith, that's where we close this morning. The believer with this gift has the intense ability to rely on God amidst overwhelming circumstances and in the face of impossible situations. Those with the gift of faith, through prayer, they appeal confidently to God to do the miraculous. They pray and they ask God and they believe God to do those things which other people think are impossible and could never be done. I believe there are some folks in here at Blue Ridge View Baptist Church that have the gift of faith. Maybe you don't realize it, but, but uh, you have the gift of faith. You, you believe God can do anything God wants to do. And here's what I'm asking you. If you just have that kind of faith, hey, start praying, okay? Start praying and ask God to do the impossible. Now, Let's look at the last one we want to see this week. He goes on in verse number 9, and he says to another, or to another believer, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Now, do not miss. Now remember, we're talking about, about your gifts and the body of Christ. Your gifts and the body of Christ. And we're talking about the varieties of gifts now. Your gifts at the body of Christ. Uh, the gifts of healing. Uh, don't miss the plurality here. The gifts of healing. It indicates that some could heal some problems and others could heal other problems. There was diversity in this ability to heal. 
I believe the Bible teaches that healing was a temporary sign gift. It was, a, it was the ability to heal, but it was a, a temporary. When we see healings in Scripture, they are almost always for the purpose of validating or authenticating the message of the gospel. It was for no other reason. Do you remember when Jesus, I was reading it just now, when Jesus was raising Lazarus from the dead, in and of itself a healing, but he raised Lazarus from the dead. Listen to me, not so much to give Lazarus his life back, but he raised Lazarus from the dead, Jesus said, that the Father might be glorified. That, that's so important. Jesus healed for the purpose of revealing his identity. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. Write those verses down. Let me read it to you. When evening had come, they brought to Jesus many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. The apostles were given the gifts of healing. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, And when he called his, his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. The seventy sent out by Jesus were given the ability to heal diseases. Luke chapter 10 verse 1 says, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And in verse 9 he says this, And heal the sick there. This is what he told them. Heal the sick there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Heal them so that they might believe the message that you're preaching. Amen. They need this knowledge. They don't have this knowledge. They don't have this authentication. So, in order to give the message a little extra oomph, a little extra power, I'm going to give you right now, in this moment, the power to heal some. And there were leaders in the early church who also had this gift. Philip had it. Acts chapter 8. Verses 5 through 7, the Bible says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and what did he do? He preached Christ to them. I love that phrase. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. The Apostle Paul, for a time, had the gift of healing. In Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 10, we read where Paul healed a cripple in Lystra. And the townspeople got so excited that they began to call him and Barnabas gods. In Acts chapter 16, he cast out a demon spirit out of a slave girl. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Listen to this. In Acts chapter 20, an old boy fell asleep in church. He was on the third floor. He fell out the window, and he died. Be careful. <laughs> but old Paul, he went down there and he raised Eutychus from the dead. God gave him that power for a time. A deadly viper once bit Paul and, and all expected Paul to die. Even, even people like Paul who obviously possess the gift of healing for a time in the New Testament, listen to me, even people like Paul they used this gift sparingly. As a matter of fact, the Bible shows us that Paul was often sick himself. He, he suffered from many beatings. He suffered from abuse. He suffered from stonings. He had failing eyesight. He had other disabilities. He had that thorn in the flesh. Yet he never healed himself, nor did he ever ask anybody whom he thought had the gift of healing to touch him and heal him. Paul's friend Epaphroditus had been terribly ill. 
and would have died unless God intervened. He wrote in Philippians 2.27, For indeed he was sick almost unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. You remember uh, when Timothy became ill with stomach troubles? What did Paul tell him in, in 2 Timothy? Told him to take a little wine for his stomach. For your stomach's sake and for your frequent infirmities. He's not advocating using alcohol as beverage. He's advocating using the alcohol in the beverage to sterilize the water. And to be used to heal frequent stomach infirmities. You ever had frequent stomach infirmities? <laughs> That's what was wrong with Timothy. Another friend of Paul's, Trophimus, he was not healed by Paul. Matter of fact, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 4.20, not only did Paul not heal him, but he left him in Miletus sick. And so we, we must conclude from the Bible that Paul only used his gift, gift of healing on special occasions in order to authenticate the gospel he was preaching. He didn't use it just to alleviate suffering or to call attention to himself or to call attention to his ministry. When he used the gift of healing that God had given him at that time, he used it to bring all of the attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. All of the attention to Almighty God. Like Paul, others who possessed this gift certainly had compassion upon those who were suffering. But the primary purpose for the healing was to authenticate the messenger and the message preached. Again, the whole key to this is that there was no completed scripture in Paul's day. They didn't have the final canon of Scripture. And so God gave these temporary sign gifts. The Holy Spirit gave these temporary sign gifts. To We have God's final revelation. We have God's final word. I don't need to hold a healing service here and slay you in the Spirit and tell you that your deaf ears are going to hear so that you might believe that I am a prophet sent from God. No, my friend. You take the Word of God. You read the Word of God. You know what the Word of God says. This is what He wants us to hear. Amen. So there was no completed Scripture. There were a lot of false prophets out there. And these sign gifts proved the message that the apostles, the message that they preached, was indeed from God. Nicodemus said to Jesus in John 3 and verse 2, We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Today, Blue Ridge View, we have no need for sign gifts. If you or I want to know whether what I speak is true or not, then you can open your Bible and find out very quickly. Amen. Amen. The great commission, Christ left the church. Jesus does not compel us to heal the sick. He does not compel us to raise the dead. Jesus commissions us to make disciples, baptize them, and mobilize them for ministry. So even though gifts of healing don't seem to be active today, did you know God still heals? Say amen right there. Amen. By the time the New Testament was nearing completion, here's what James wrote. James said, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You say, Preacher, does Blue Ridge you do that? Well, we can if we're asked. I've seen it done. Have people been healed? Well, I believe some have been healed. But do I or the elders or the deacons, whatever you want to call them, do we have the gift of healings? Absolutely not. No one today heals as Jesus or the apostles did. Matter of fact, most of the so-called faith healers of our day have more in common with professional wrestlers than the authentic healing ministries described in the New Testament. Now listen, Stacy. when I lay in bed at night and I'm watching WWE, I'm still telling you that they're great athletes. 
We had an argument about that the other night. Have you ever wondered why you never see these faith healers down at the local hospital? Walking through the halls and going in the rooms? Have you ever wondered why some of the faith healers that are, that are popular in our day, why you never see them in third world countries, in little villages, in Uganda that are ravaged by the AIDS virus? Matter of fact, you'll even find in the Bible, after, uh, Paul's, after Paul's writings, there comes a time in Scripture where these sign gifts just kind of fade away. and You don't hear about them anymore. We have every right. You have every right to throw yourself upon the mercy of God yes. and to ask Him to heal you of any injury or sickness, but always remember that God has offered us no blanket promise to heal anybody. God does the healing. I'll come to you. I'll bring the deacons. We'll anoint you with oil. But it is the prayer of faith that saves. Amen. It is God that does the healing. So we conclude tonight. Some of you have this, some of the gifts we've studied today. You've got the gift of wisdom. You've got the gift of knowledge. Some of you have the gift of faith. As we'll see next week, we're going to get into more serving gifts. You've got those gifts. Are you using them in kingdom work? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed.